Peace, Abargani, Islam, Salam, Hatep, Rahubat, Gino Lago, Ninani, Chief Noble Bandele Elami. Back again for another video. To today's video, we will be discussing uh, a continuation of marriage. The rites of passage is a very important part of the rites of passage. Uh, and so we want to continue talking about that. Uh, so this one will kind of be a continuation off of a previous video on getting married without a license. And so it's going to be a little update. We got, you know, got to update some information on that. Uh, things, you know, make expand a little bit more on that. So but before we get into that, please like the video, subscribe to the video, the videos and hit the notification so that you can get these videos because you know i'm dropping more and more all the time okay check out um indigenous services .com. right here it's a one-stop shop for a lot of moorish indigenous uh ideas and different uh legal strategies okay so you know one of the things we also have here is the morris american license plate it have a registration so you know this is a, for religious purposes so if you're interested in that please go to the website uh, also check out the books that i have produced and i've written and put together here on amazon.com so you can check out these books there okay so now let's get into this because we want to talk about the marriage license versus basically a religious a religious wedding or a religious marriage okay so what we want to do to expand on that we want to look at we want to look at this religious marriage versus legal marriage this article I thought was really, uh, you know, it, 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 it brought out what was being talked about, what I kind of got into in the last video. I think it's going to make more clarity in it. So let's look at this religious marriage versus legal marriage. OK, while I fully expect most readers here to understand the distinction between religious marriage and legal or civil marriage. OK, so a legal marriage is also maybe considered a civil marriage. It is perfectly clear that a large segment of American society does not. This lack of understanding is playing out as we speak in Ronan County, Kentucky, as the clerk court refuses to comply with the preliminary injunction requiring her to issue marriage license to same sex couples. OK. Now, see whatever post here and there. OK, we're not going to get into that. But so basically it's saying like this is that one point where the woman didn't want to uh, marry them because of her religious beliefs. She, she felt like it wasn't right, which I get. So that's why you get that religious marriage versus the legal. So let's look at marriage. And it says, what is marriage? In the United States, the word marriage refers to two distinct things. First, marriage is a religious ceremony, which is what we deal with. You know, if a lot of people want to get married without the civil part, they want to have the religious ceremony, but they want that religious ceremony to be recognized by the state. So that's what we're going to look at. But anyway, it says, first of all, it's a religious ceremony where two people are joined as partners in the eyes of their God or church. I will call this religious marriage, okay? So then the second marriage is a legal relationship whereby the government recognizes and confers legal rights upon two people who desire to join together and meet a set of government mandated criteria. I call this legal marriage. So, okay, that's the difference. He's calling that legal marriage basically a civil marriage where the government either joins them together or recognizes that joint effort okay so i get that 
Religious marriage and legal marriage are separate and distinct relationships. A couple need not be in a religious marriage in order to be in a legal marriage. Likewise, a couple need not be in a legal marriage to be in a religious marriage. Okay, so they're two separate. Now, this might bring it home. For example, a magistrate may perform a legal marriage in my home state of North Carolina. All that is required is a man and a woman to meet the statutory requirements, obtaining a marriage license, and in presence of a magistrate, take each other's hand as husband and wife. No religious ceremony need occur, and religious marriage is neither necessary or nor required. Adherence to any particular religious creed or custom is unnecessary. It says every legal marriage is a civil marriage, as that it is what the law recognized. A legal marriage may also be a religious marriage, but not required. Further, no marriage license is required look, for a religious marriage. The only purpose served by a marriage license is to enter a legal marriage. So understand that is that getting a marriage license is only really used for civil or what he calls a legal marriage. Now, we're going to go just a little bit further. It says on the flip side, some religious permits plural marriage or polygamy. Okay. Islam, more the Mormons. Okay. Um, it says, however, let's go a little bit further. Down. It says, however, each state prohibits plural marriage, polygamy, and uh, polygamous religious marriage. Even if properly ordained or sanctified under the tenets of that religion, it is not a legal marriage in any state. Now, I mean, kind of what I feel like a polygamous religious marriage is different than a polygamous, like you can't have a polygamous legal marriage. But you can have a, a, but you can have a polygamous religious marriage. Okay. If even though they not properly ordained or whatnot, I mean you could they, because it's a religious marriage, they really don't have jurisdiction over that. But they may not recognize it. That's the key. It says even a routine religious marriage is not automatically a legal marriage. So it's saying that it's not automatically, but it. Now, my thing is that you can create where you, you, you can bring up the religious uh, constitutional law where they can't impede on your religious duty. You know, like the state can't impede on your religion based on constitution, which we've talked about before. So you're able to take your religious marriage and get it recognized by the state, even though he's saying that you really need to have a legal marriage. But I'm really showing you this to show the difference between a legal and a religious. Okay, but it says so. Anyway, it's saying for someone to have both a religious marriage and a legal marriage, additional steps are required. Primarily ensuring that the couple gets legally married, obtaining a marriage license. So legally married is to get a marriage license, and requiring that the minister perform some duly, some some to perform some purely secular bureaucratic function like filling out and signing. But if a minister can preside, it says, but if a minister can preside over each, doesn't that combine religious and legal? He says, no, they remain separate and distinct, despite some overlap. Many years ago, states decided to make a process for prospective spouses to obtain a legal marriage easier by allowing a couple to obtain religious marriage and legal marriage at the same time. So that's something that you see. They kind of try to combine the two when you go down there to your, uh, the, down to the courthouse and get uh, legal marriage. They try to combine the two. So they let your minister fill out the stuff. Okay, that's basically what they're saying in that. Uh, now this is the part I'm gonna go down a little further. 
It says, similarly, no particular religion should dictate the rules of legal marriage. The United States, which is originally settled by persecuted religious minorities from Europe, okay, was designed as a country where its religious freedom was paramount. The separation of church and state is part of the founding philosophies of this country. Okay, look at it. Take note on that. Now it says, while the religious beliefs and moral values of executives, legislators, and judges naturally inform their, their decision-making, religious doctrine itself has no place in our civil law. They don't, they don't come together. They separate jurisdiction. But you may say this is a Christian nation. Well, we understand it. I mean, you got Christian beliefs, but anybody basically is protected. Okay. So that's base. That's that's kind of what I wanted to go over. You know what I mean? Now, what uh, uh, what else I wanted to look at is if it comes up the uh, the marriage laws. We look at the marriage laws because each state got different marriage laws, and I'm not going to go for time purpose. I don't really have time, but I wanted to quickly look at. Like a couple of them, like Maine and the U.S. law. This is U.S. laws. You go to usmarriagelaws.com. It says U.S. marriage laws, Maine's wedding officiants, a, a marriage solemnized before any known inhabitant of the state confessing to be a justice, judge, justice of the peace or notary republic or an ordained or licensed minister of the gospel is not void, nor is it the validity affected by any want of jurisdiction or authority in the justice judge justice of peace notary or minister or by any omission or informally or entering in entering the intention of marriage if the marriage is in other respects lawful and consummated with full belief on the part of the persons we go up a little bit either of the persons married they that they are lawfully married so they go into like, for like this state is really heavy. That's why I wanted to. Most of these states don't go this deep into it. But they, this state, Maine did. And it says like whether a resident or non-resident of this state and whether or not a citizen of the United States. So they go in, you know, in. They said or an ordained minister of the gospel, clergy, engaged in service of a religious body to which cleric belong. A person licensed to preach by uh, association of ministries. Every person authorized to unite persons in marriage shall make and keep record of every marriage solemnized by that person in conformity with the forms and instructions prescribed by the state. Now this is the part though. Any person who solemnizes a marriage when not authorized to do so under section 655 commits a civil violation for which a forfeiture not to exceed a hundred dollars. So there's if if you're not even to them, like if you you might get in trouble in that instance if you're not legally uh, able to solemnize a marriage. So you got to look up solemnize, but you can't perform marriages unless you have that in certain states. So I mean, like that's something that we didn't get into the last video. The fact that uh, you know marriage license laws do vary from state to state. Uh, there was another one, like even like Ohio. Like I wanted to show Ohio because that's the state we're in, and uh, it, it's a uh, it's totally different. Like you know, they don't have those laws. It's very interesting how different states, you know set up there, you know, because each state is sovereign still to, to some extent. They have right to create their own uh, law. You know, like, look at that right there. That's a lot. But here go Ohio. Sorry so long. But Ohio, to legally recognize clergy status in Ohio, one must have ordination, ordination papers from a church recognized in Ohio. So it got to be, you know, and real quick to show uh, this is the minister license to get to solemnize. So 
That's all I got with you, though. Peace. We get back.